Pantay na tayo ng konti. Mga 135. Hmm, tinggal nak kontak. <clears throat> Wait lang guys ah Alright, good afternoon everyone. Welcome to uh, our second class. Before that, ano na lang, kunin ko na lang muna yung attendance para mamaya ay hindi na ako mag-aaban. Wait lang. Okay. This is Tony Alcantara. Areta Jeline. Present po. Christine. Present, sir. Cecilia. Present po. Arjen. Present po. Patricia. Present, sir. Patricia. Present po. Alfeo. Sir, present. Okay. Bea May. Present po. Nicole. Present po. 
Ah, sorry. Vincent. Ah, uh, yung Merlin Chavez, di Chavez. Present po. EJ. Sir Present. Okay. Ira Mia. Romel. Present, sir. Okay. Romel. Present po. Sir present. Okay. Mary Grace. Sir, yun po yung naubusan ng data. Okay. Nag-text sa akin. Chat sa akin. Si Adrian. Elika Marie. Sir, dito po. Okay. Leo. Present po, sir. Girlie. Wendy. Vince. Sir, present po. Nelsie. Caroline. Ronald. Angeline. Sir, present po. Okay. John Hillary. Sir, present po. Bernard. Sir, nandito po. Jelly Ann. Sir, present po. Nino. Miguel. Joy. Present, sir. Stephanie. Present, po. Jade. Present, sir. Justin. Present, po, sir. Uh, Sacha. Present, po. Alfred. Present, po, sir. Jen. Present po. Okay. Jen Claril. Silverio. Kit Irwin. Present po. Marjorie. Raymart. Present sir. Gladys. Present sir. Okay. Carol. Present po. Regine. Present po. Angela. Present po, sir. Okay. So, thank you for attending. For the, ano, quiz yung binigay ko na sa event. Meron pang hindi nakakapagpasa. Patanong na lang din sa mga classmates nyo kung, ano, si Wendy, Si Caroline tsaka si Alfred, wala pa kayong medyo papasa sa akin sa Industrial Information System. Tama ba? Opo. Opo, send ka na lang po mamaya. Okay, sige. Tapos na po. Pasend na lang ako mamaya. Sige, pasend. Okay, so antayin ko yan. So based naman dun sa, ano, sa sinanyo, ayos naman. Yun nga lang, sabi ko, refrain na lang kapag ano, yung mga copy-paste. Kasi chinatsik ko talaga kung uh, kayo mismo yung gumawa nung, ano, nung sagot. Okay? Okay. So previously we discussed uh, yung introduction ng information technology. So for today, we will discuss the information technology as a managerial uh, review. So actually this one is alam ko yung part dito is napagdaanan yun na. So para magiging review na lang din siya. 
Share ko lang yung screen ko. Okay. So, information technology ay managerial review. So, for the learning outcomes, medyo madami. So, we will discuss the information system hardware. Ito, very basic lang naman to. Ano ba yung mga ginagamit natin ng mga hardware for the information system? Uh, primary components of computer and function they perform. Uh, we will define the term software. Uh, the two primary categories of software. Difference between data, information, and knowledge. We will also define the term database and identify the steps to creating one. The role of database management system. Characteristic of a data warehouse. Uh, we will define also the data mining and describe its role in an organization. We will understand the history and development of networking technologies. The key terms associated with networking technologies. Identify the information security triad. So how we can protect our information security, our information. And we will identify and understand the high level concepts surrounding information security tools. So first, uh, hardware. When we say hardware, it's physical uh, uh, device. So it is a digital device that you can physically touch. Ito yung mga physical na machine and equipment na ginagamit natin for information system. This includes the following. We have the desktop computers, laptop, mobile phone, tablet computers, e-readers, storage devices such as flash drive, input devices such as keyboard, uh, mouse and scanners, and the output devices such as printers and speakers. So digital technologies are now being integrated into many everyday objects. So the days of, of a device labeled category, categorically as computer hardware may be ending. So example of this type of digital, divide, digital devices include automobiles, refrigerators, and even soft dispensers. So in this chapter, we will also explore digital devices, beginning with defining what we mean by the term itself. All right. When we say digi digital devices, it is a process or electronic signals that represent either a one on or a zero off. So yung one zero, yung tinatawag natin na uh, a binary uh, digit. So the on state uh, is represented by the presence of an electronic signal. The off state is represented by the absence of an electronic signal. So each one or zero is referred to as a bit. So a contraction of binary digit. So a group of eight bits is a byte. Okay. The first personal computer could process eight bits of data at once. While currently modern PCs, you can now process 64 bits of data at a time, which where the, ter the term 64 bit processor came, comes from. So yun yung madalas na gina Meron para tayong ginagamit na 32 uh, bits na processor, but uh, mostly yung mga bagong labas ngayon ng mga digital devices, we have the 64-bit processor na kung saan mas mabilis natin nagagamit yung uh, those digital devices. Mas efficient siyang gamitin. So what? The one hardware na ginagamit natin for information system is motherboard. So it is the main circuit board in the computer. So for example, CPU, memory, and storage components, among other things, are connect into the motherboard. So yung motherboard, andun lahat yung information, andun lahat yung system na nagpapagana dun sa mga digital devices. So it can be in different shapes and sizes depending upon how compact or gano'ng kalaki yung ating computer. So almost all electronics devices ay meron tayong motherboard. For example, for our product, we have the projector and the printer. Both product ay meron kaming nilalagay na motherboard na kung saan dun nakalagay yung program uh, kung paano magpa-function yung ating mga electronic devices. So most modern motherboards have integrated components such as video and sound processing which used to require separate uh, components. We have the random access memory. When we say random access memory, o RAM natin tinatawag, when a, com when a computer starts up, it begins to load information from the hard disk into its working memory. 
the working memory called random access memory that can transfer data much faster than the hard disk. So any program that you're running on the computer, uh, loaded saram for processing. So for example, in our phone, we have the random access memory na kung saan, yun yung nagpa-function kapag nagbubukas tayo ng mga application. Siya like chain nagpa-process from the hard disk, mapapunta doon yung uh, data na kailangan natin para marun natin yung isang program. So in order for a computer to work effectively, some minimal amount of RAM must be installed. In most cases, adding more RAM will allow the computer to run faster. For example, sa ating mga desktop, sa ating mga computers, meron tayong uh, 2 gigabyte na RAM, 4 gigabyte na RAM, at saka meron, meron, mas maram, mas malak, meron pa tayong mga 8 gig, 32 gig. So, doon nagbe-base kung paano mag-work effectively yung ating uh, computer. Kasi pag mas mababa yung RAM, medyo mabagal yung loop processing ng mga programs and softwares. Kagaya na sa cellphone. Madalas, uh, yung gaming phone na binibili natin, uh, mas pinaprefer natin yung mga 8 gig na RAM or 6 gig na RAM kasi in terms of games, mas nagsa-function ng maayos yung ating cellphone. Kasi pag mas mababa, uh, possible, hindi siya, hindi siya na tinatawag na gaming phone. So another characteristic of RAM is that it is volatile. When we say volatile, uh, hindi siya gumagana kapag hindi uh, siya nakasaksak o hindi siya naka-on. So if naka-off yung ating device, uh, yung lahat ng memory sa RAM is mawawala. Unlike for the hard disk, uh, ma-open, uh, wala mang, hindi man naka-on yung ating digital device or naka-off man yung digital device natin, lahat ng data na nasa hard disk ay hindi mabubura. Okay? So ito naman yung hard disk. Hard disk, while the RAM is used for working memory, the computer also needs a place to store data for the longer term. So most of the days, personal computer use a hard disk for long-term data storage. A hard disk is where the data is stored when the computer is turned off and where it is retrieved from the computer is turned on. So sabi ko nga, yung data na meron tayo sa hard disk, hindi siya nawawala kahit patay or uh, kahit on or off yung ating computer. So when it is called a hard disk, a hard disk consists of a stack of disks inside the hard metal case. Yung hard disk kasi, sige, kuha lang ako ng picture para mas makita natin. Yung hard disk, meron daw siyang mga disk sa loob na kung saan, once na may on natin yung uh, ating computer, siya ay mag start na mag-spin uh, yung mga disk na yun. So, hindi ko lang nalagyan ng pictures, kaya ko na lang din tayo. Ha? Okay. This one, kita nyo, this is the example of the hard disk na kung saan meron tayong uh, disk na nasa loob na siya yung nag-start na mag-spin uh, once na mag-on natin yung ating computer. So dito natin nilalagay mostly yung ating data na ating nilalagay, yung mga files na meron tayo sa ating computer. So as you can see, this one, this is the uh, IBM uh, hard disk. IBM 305 hard disk. So this one, ang memory lang nito is 3.75 MB. Ito yung unang ginagamit, itong mga malaking cabinet na to. Siya yung unang mga ginagamit para mag-store ng data. So ang maximum capacity niyan ay 3.75 MB. Na kung titingnan natin yung 3.75 MB, ano lang siya? Isang picture lang sa isang smartphone. Ganun kalaki yung ginagamit natin dati. Pero ngayon, syempre, mas nagiging compact, mas nagiging improve yung ating technology. We have the solid state drives. So, a relatively new component becoming more common in some personal computers is the solid state drives or the SSD. So, the SSD performs the same function ng hard drive, hard disk. So, this is a long-term storage. Instead of spinning disk, the SSD use, use, sorry, uses flash memory which is much faster. So, unlike dun sa uh, hard disk drive natin o yung HDD. So we have the SSD na ang ginagamit naman niya sa halip na spinning uh, disk is the flash memory which is much much faster pero mas mahal siya ng konti pag itong doon sa hard drive. So yung itsura niya din tayo sa internet. Ah. 
So, yan. So, ito yung itsura nung uh, SSD. So, mas compact siya, mas maliit, and wala siyang uh, spinning disk. So, if ever na gusto nyo pang mas malaman with the difference between the hard state, hard disk and the uh, solid state drive. So, I have here a uh, YouTube link na kung saan mas maintindihan natin kung ano yung pinagkaiba ng dalawa. So, isisend ko na lang ito sa ating GC. You can watch it uh, later. Okay. The next one is the removable media. When, say, when we say removable media, uh, beside dun sa mga fixed storage components natin, we have the removable storage area. Are also, media are also used in personal computers. So, removable media allows you to take your data with you. And just as with all other te digital technologies, this media have gotten smaller and more powerful as the years have gone by. So, for those removable media, media we have the memory card. We have a uh, flash drive. So, yun yung ano natin. Yun yung mga removal ng media, media na kung saan pwede natin store yung mga data na meron tayo sa operational computer para madala natin. Anyway, sabi ko nga, ito yung very basic lang. Ano, para lang tayo nag-aaral ng computers. But, uh, it is important na mas maintindihan natin uh, ano ba yung mga uh, mga ginagamit for the information system. Next, we have the network connection. For net network connection, when personal computers were first developed, they were standalone units, which meant the data was brought into the computer or removed from the computer via removable media, such as the floppy disk. Medyo luma na yung floppy disk. Hindi na natin naabutan yun. So, naabutan natin yung finished flash drive. So, initially, this was done by adding an expansion card to the computer that enabled the network connection, but by the mid-1990s, a network port was standard on most personal computers as wireless technologies began to dominate in the early 2000s. So many personal computers also began including wireless networking capabilities. So ginagamit naman natin yung network connection in order to transfer data from one computer to another computer without using uh, removable devices such as a uh, flash drive. But uh, in the early 2000s, meron tayong ginagamit na uh, wireless networking na capabilities. So, when we say input and output in order for a personal computer to be useful, hindi lang siya basta computer, kailangan natin ng mga input and output devices. So, these input and output devices connect to the computer via various connection ports which, gener which generally are part of the motherboard and are accessible outside the computer case. So, in early personal computers, specific ports were designated for each type. So, meron na tayo iba't ibang uri ng mga port sa ating computer na uh, maraming available na port na pwede tayong ilagay. It should be hands, marami tayong pwede ilagay ng mga input and output devices. So, meron kasi tayo iba't ibang uri ng type ng ports. We have the Type B, we have the HDMI, uh, the VGA. So, yan. So, today, almost all devices plug into a computer through the use of USB port. So, this, type, this port type first introduced in 1996 has increased in its capabilities both in its data transfer rate and power supplied. So we now have the Bluetooth. Besides USB, some input and output devices connect to the computer via a wireless technology standard called Bluetooth. So Bluetooth na tayo mag-umpisa, hindi na tayo mag sa infrared na kung saan, hindi ko alam if some of you ba inaabutan yung ano uh, yung infrared na kung saan uh, merong part ng device na tinatapat lang tayo dun sa same, same infrared ng device na kung, para makapagpasa ng mga uh, mga data. So, yun. Wireless din siya. Matuturo natin siya wireless yung infrared. Pero, ang problem lang dun, syempre, hindi mo pwedeng pag-alisin yung magkatapat na infrared na part ng infrared device ng mga, ng mga devices na yan. Okay? Unlike kay Bluetooth, so, anywhere, anytime, pwede tayo magpasa ng mga data. So, Bluetooth was first invented in the 1990s and exchanged data over the short distance using radio waves. So, radio waves ang ginagamit pag ito kay Bluetooth. Generally, it has a range of 100 to 150 feet. So, for devices to communicate via Bluetooth, both of the personal computer and the connecting device, syempre kailangan mayroong Bluetooth communication suite na naka-install. 
So input devices. So all personal computers need components that allow the user to input data. So ano ba yung mga input devices na meron tayo? So we have the mouse, the keyboard, or the ano ba ba? Uh, mga video camera. So for example, many new devices have now use touch screen as the primary way of entering data. But some our devices hindi na natin kailangan ng keyboard, ng mouse, kasi uh, nauso na rin talaga yung uh, touch screen kahit dun sa mga personal na computers. Okay. Next, we have the input devices. Again, besides the keyboard and mouse, additional input devices are becoming more common like scanners allow users to input documents to the computer either as message or as a text. So microphones also to record video, webcams, video cameras, to ginagamit natin siya for video chat session. And the output devices naman, uh, basically, siya naman yung nag-output ng mga data na meron tayo. For example, for the display, this will be representing the state of the computer. For example, yung ating screen or projector natin pinatawag or television or speakers. So, yun naman yung mga output devices. Printers. So, yun. Okay. so, and then, another device is the smartphone which is very common nowadays. So, as we all know, uh, information, our first modern day mobile phone was invented last 1973. So, ang noon, parang isang brick or yung bato and weighing almost 2 pounds. So ganun kalaki yung nausong uh, first modern uh, first mobile phone noong 1973. It was priced out of reach for most consumers ay nearly $4,000. Kung pepresyahan natin siya ngayon, kung $4,000, it is almost 200,000. Ang mahal. Since then, mobile phone becomes smaller and less expensive. Today, mobile phones are a modern convenience available to all levels of society. So, almost lahat ng levels ng society is meron ng phone. Yung iba nga, dalawa pa. May touchscreen, may keypad. So, a smartphone have many of the same characteristics as a personal computer such as operating system and memory. So, yun yung nangyayari ngayon sa smartphone natin. Halos same na siya uh, ng operating system and memory ng ating mga personal computer. So, the first smartphone was IBM Simon which introduced in 1994. Then we have the tablet computers as one of the digital devices. A tablet computer is one that uses a touch screen as its primary input and is small enough and light enough to be carried around easily. So they, they generally have no keypad and are self-contained inside the rectangular case. So the first tablet computers appeared in the early 2000 and used meron tayong pen for writing device input. All right. After our hardware, we have also called the software. So the software, the second component of information system is software. Simply put, software is created through the process of programming. Without software, the hardware would not be functional. So hindi magiging functional ang hardware natin kung wala din tayo software. So software, meron tayong two types ng software or two categories. We have the operation operating system, and the application software. Operating system manage the hardware and create the interface between the hardware and the user. While sa application software, it is the category of programs that do something useful for the user. Okay. When we see operating system, ayun yung nagkikreate ng interface between the hardware and the user. While the application, meron siyang specific na use, specific na uh, tool or activity na pwede natin gawin doon. For example, uh, the Microsoft Office are considered the uh, application software na kung saan pwede tayong uh, mag-word processing, use spreadsheet, the PowerPoint. While the operating system is the overall uh, operating system of a computer. Uh, for example, the window, uh, Windows operating system. So, uh, yun yung consider natin na different type of 
software. When we say operating system, it provides several essential functions such as managing the hardware resources of the computer, providing user interface components, providing a platform for software developers to write applications. All computing devices run an operation and operating system for personal computers. The most popular operating system are Microsoft Windows. We have also the Apple OS X. Meron siya sariling uh, operating system. And meron din uh, different version yung sa Linux or smartphones and tablets. <coughs> Excuse me. Tablets run operating system as well as such as Apple iOS, Google. So pag ito naman sa smartphone, yan yung ating mga operating system. So we have the Apple, Google's Android, Microsoft Windows Mobile, Mobile and the BlackBerry. And the second major category of software is application software. So application software is essentially software that allows the user to accomplish some goals or purpose. For example, the Microsoft Word, the Internet Explorer, the Firefox, even a computer game. Mga uh, League of Legends, Dota. So they are types, they are examples of application software. Along with the spreadsheet, several other software applications have become a standard tools for the workplace. Ito naman ay, uh, ito yung mga basic uh, application na a software na kung saan nakakapag-boost ng productivity ng mga office employees. So, we have the word processing, spreadsheet, and presentation. So, yun nga, ano pag-asapan na naman natin na kanina, yun yung sa Microsoft Office. So, yun. So, utility software and programming software. Two subcategories of application software worth mentioning are utility software and programming software. Utility, so utility software includes a software that allows you to fix or modify your computer in some ways. Example, yung mga antivirus. Yan. Kung bagay, ano yung pwede pa natin idagdag dun sa ating computer? Uh, this defrag uh, defragmentation software. This type of software packages were invented to fill shortcomings in operating system. Many times, the subsequent release of an operating system will include this utility function as part of the operating system itself. Programming software naman, ito yung ginagamit natin to make more software. So ito yung ginagamit ng mga IT, mga application specialists, para makapag-create pa ng iba't ibang program. So most of these programs provide programmers with an environment in which they can write the code, test it, and convert it into the format that can, can then be run on a computer. So yun naman yung mga ginagamit ng mga programmers in order to create additional or new application software. Okay. Wait lang. Wait lang guys ha. Post ko lang ng konti dito. Wait. Sir, siya alam po. Pengen lima, di ako makahinga. Kukukukuk. Okay. Oh, God bless. God bless. Okay, let's proceed. Next, we have the Enterprise Resource Planning or DRP. So, in 1990s, the need to bring the organization's information back under centralized control become more apparent. So, ngayon kasi, ang trend kasi dapat, ang trend talaga sa mga, uh, mga organization, they have a centralized uh, system, information system. So, sometimes we use this entire Enterprise Resource Planning. So, the Enterprise Resource Planning System, sometimes called Enterprise Software, was developed to bring together an entire organization in one software application. Simply put, an ERP system is a software application. So utilizing a central database that is implemented throughout 
the entire organization. So in our uh, company, we use enterprise source planning or enterprise software na kung saan dun makikita yung uh, we have the training records, the payroll, the asset uh, management, uh, the overall manpower, lahat ng details ng mga manpower na meron kami. So we use uh, enterprise uh, software. So let's take a look, a closer look at the definition. Ulitin lang natin. Software application, an ERPS software application that is used by many organization employees. Utilizing a central database, so we use ERP in order to utilize, in order to centralize our data. So what this means practically is that there is only one customer database, there is only one calculation for revenue. Kumbaga, uh, since is centralizing data, magiging common yung data na makukuha natin. And that is implemented throughout the entire organization. So ERP systems includes functionality that covers all the essential components of a business. Further, an organization can purchase modules for its ERP system that match its specific needs, such as manufacturing or planning. Uh, for example, in our part, uh, yung ERP uh, software na ginagamit, yung software application na ginagamit natin, namin, ay dun kami nagbe-base ng our planning our purchasing ng mga materials kasi nakikita doon sa system namin ilan na lang yung natitirang parts, ilan na lang natitirang raw materials, consumable items na gagamitin namin for the manufacturing, for the production. So doon din nakikita na kailangan na ba nating order o kailangan na ba nating kailangan na ba nating uh, mag-purchase ulit ng mga bagong additional parts. All right. Now, we will proceed to the data information and the knowledge. So, we will identify ano ba yung difference nung tatlo. So, data are the raw bits and pieces of information with no context. If I told you 15, 23, 14, and 85, you wouldn't have learned anything. But, I would have given you data. Data can be quantitative or qualitative. When we say quantitative, it is numeric. When we say qualitative, siya naman yung descriptive, kagaya ng ruby red. The color of a 2013 Ford Focus. So we use qualitative data or we describe the, the product using a color. So this example of uh, qualitative data. When we say quantitative, measurement, count, so yeah. A number can be qualitative too. If I tell you my favorite number is 5, that is qualitative data because it is descriptive. Not the result of a measurement or mathematical calculation. So when you say my favorite number is 5, yes, 5 is a quantitative data, but uh, given that it is your favorite number, you can say that it's a descriptive information. So we have here the wisdom uh, data. So we process the data into information in order it to become a knowledge and further it will become uh, wisdom. So examples of data. Almost all software programs require data to do anything useful. For example, if you're editing a document in a word processor such as Microsoft Word, the document you're working on is the data. The word processing software can be manip can manipulate the data, create a new document, dupli duplicate a docu document, modify a document. Some other example of data are an MP3 music file, video file, spreadsheets, a web page, an ebook. So in such in some cases, such as with an ebook, you may only have the ability to read the data. So yun yung example ng mga data natin. When we say databases. Okay, balikan lang natin. So, those data na ginagamit natin for a word processing, for a spreadsheet. So, once, it's, once we stored it, it become an information to others. But, uh, for example, an article, an e-book, uh, nag-create tayo ng data using those uh, applications or softwares. So, that will, be a good, that will be an information to kung sino man ang magbabasa nung 
mga ebook na yun. So, once nabasa nila information, it became part of their knowledge and kung magstay yun sa kanila and i-practice nila yun, kung ano natutunan nila doon, it will become a wisdom. Ngayon ay naula na. So, let's proceed to the databases. The goal of many information systems is to transform data into information in order to generate knowledge that can be used for decision making. So in order to do this, the system must be able to take data, put the data into context, and provide tools for aggregation and analysis. So we use databases in order. Ang purpose niyan, siyempre, para balikan natin kung ano ba yung mga for a business, para magkaroon tayo ng analysis do sa mga, for example, in terms of sales, in terms of the profit, so, nagagamit natin yung mga databases. A database is an organized collection of related information. It is an organized collection because in database, all data is described and associated with other data. All information in a database should be related as well. Separate that databases should be created to manage unrelated information. For example, a database that contains information about student should not also hold information about the company stock price. Medyo mahihirapan tayong i-control yung data na meron tayo. Database are not always digital. So, meron tayong database can be used of cabinet, for instance, considered, kinoconsider din siya ng mga database. Uh, for the purpose of this text, we'll only consider digital databases. In terms of data types, so ito yung mga types ng data. We have the text, number. It is either a yes or a no, date and time, currency, paragraph text, and object. Question. Mamaya, kapag medyo lumakas ang ulat, di nyo na akong naririnig, sabihin nyo na lang sa akin ha, para stop na tayo. So, let's proceed. When we say data warehouse, as organization have begun to utilize databases as the center centerpiece of their operation, the need to fully understand and leverage the data they are collecting has become more and more apparent. However, directly analyzing the data is that is needed for day-to-day -day operation. So it's not good idea. Hindi naman pwedeng uh, every day, sinecheck natin yung sales. So mostly our our data, meron siyang timing kung kailan tayo nag-analyze. Uh, for example, we have data na sinecheck natin on a weekly basis, meron din on a monthly basis. So, hindi siya laging araw-araw. We do not want to tax the operation of the company more than we need to. Furthermore, organization also want to analyze data in historical sense. How does the data we have today compare the same set of data this time last month or last year? For example, in terms of manpower, prob manpower problem, absenteeism, we used the data last year. Uh, kumbaga, on this season, kumbaga medyo malapit na yung Christmas season, how are we going to compare yung attendance rate natin ngayon compared to the last year attendance rate within the same day? So, makikita natin kung ano yung magiging, nagiging factor kung bakit hindi siya nagkakapareho. For example, mas mataas ang attendance namin uh, for this uh, year end compared to dun sa June, July, August. Bakit? Kasi, uh, siyempre, mag-year end na. Kailangan mong pumasok ng madalas. Andiyan yung evaluation period. ba Kailangan magpabida ng konti. And like June, July, August, medyo mid-year yan. Uh, mostly, nagiging reason nila is tag-ulan yan, tagkaasakit. So, yun yun. Nagagamit natin yung mga historical data na nakuha natin sa data warehouse para ma-analyze natin yung current situation. So, however, the execution of this concept is not that simple. A data warehouse should be designed so that it meets the following criteria. First, it uses non-operational data. The data is time variant and the data is standardized. Sabihin, kung kanina sa Excel, kung ang date natin is gantong format, in data warehouse, kailangan standardized yung data. Same siya ng format. And then, for example, in terms of quantity, ganun din. Dapat standardized yung ating their data warehouse. So for example, as you can see, uh, the 
the ERP, the marketing, the HR, and the sales uses data warehouse uh, in order to analyze yung current situation para kung ano yung maging action nila, ano yung maging ma-analyze nila dun sa mga data na meron tayo, is na-implement nila dun sa uh, current operation natin. Ano ba yung mga benefit nito? Process of developing a data warehouse forces an organization of better understanding understanding the data. So, currently collecting an equally important data is not being, uh, what data is not being collected. Data warehouse provide a centralized view of all data being collected, process the enterprise, and provide a means of for determining data is inconsistent. Once all data is identified as consistent, an organization can generate one version of the truth. This is important when the company wants to report consistent statistics about itself, such as revenue or number of employees. So, yun yan. Having a data warehouse, snapshots of data can be taken over time. This creates historical record which, can, which allows for an analysis of the trend. And lastly, it also provides tools para makapag-combine tayo ng data we're in, makakapag-provide tayo ng mga new information and new analysis. Pwede natin i-compare yung data na, for example, the attendance data to the production uh, result, the productivity na meron tayo. Next one, next topic will be the data mining. When we say data mining, it is the process of analyzing data to find previously unknown trends, patterns, and associations in order to make decisions. So, ito na yung isa sa functions ng data warehouse natin wherein we can uh, conduct data mine. So, generally, data mining is accomplished through automated means against extremely large data sets such as data warehouse. So, dun nga natin kinukuha yung mga data natin and then uh, na-analyze natin uh, what is the trend, the patterns, associations in order to make uh, good decisions. Kasi in a business, we do not uh, decide uh, using a uh, without using any data. Tatanungin ka ng boss mo o paano mo na sabi na kailangan nating uh, magkaroon ng additional machine yung production line na to. Meron ka bang data? Do you have the time and motion studies? Ano yung naging previous data natin? Ano yung naging previous result ng ating productivity last year? Yung ba yung naging problema natin? So we have to provide the data para makapagbigay tayo ng good decision. Kasi most of us uh, will be assigned uh, in terms of the improvement kasi. So, as industrial engineer, we became ano, uh, problem sol solvers pag yung kay production. If there will be problem with the quality, productivity, isa tayo sa mga gumagawa ng uh, action and countermeasures. So, we must have, uh, we must know the data, the trend, in order to make a good decision. So, some examples of data mining. Analysis of sales from large grocery chain. Ilan ba yung nabibenta ko? Ilan ba yung nabibenta ng product na ganito sa isang araw? Nalakas na ulan. Sorry. So, ilan ba yung napuntang uh, customer dito sa store ko? Re-review pa ako. Yes po, sir. Okay naman. Okay lang po, sir. Mahina po, mahina. Mahina Opo. na, no? Mahina yung ulan. Opo. Okay. Sabihin nyo, pag hindi nyo na ako naiintindihan, ha? Ay, nako. Grabe yung ulan to. Rinig nyo pa ako? Yes. Rinig pa, Opo, rinig sir. pa, sir. Okay. Opo, sir. Opo. Sige, diretso na natin. A bank may find the loan applicants. Ay, ito. Isa, isa sa maganda sa data mining. Uh, yung mga banko kasi, meron siyang centralized na information system. For example, ako, may utang ako sa BPI na hindi ko nabayaran sa credit card ng BPI. Pag nag-apply ako ng credit card kay BDO, rinig pa rin makikita po. nila na meron akong pinagkakautangan sa BPI. So, isa siya sa paraan ng mga banko para i-decline yung application ko for credit card or application ko for a loan. So, uh, yun yung ginagamit ng mga banko ngayon. 
a baseball team may find the collegiate basketball players with specific statistics. So yun, sa sports, ginagamit din siya. Parang tinitingnan nung maging, maka, tinitingnan nung, kalab, nung isang grupo, yung mga kalaban nila, yung history. Ano yung strategies ng mga to? For example, in terms of uh, sa baseball, ano yung kanilang hitting percentage, pitching, fielding. So, doon nila makikita na anong gagawin strategy nung during the, uh, the competition. However, so yun nga, habang tumataas kasi yung power ng data mining, nagkaaroon tayo syempre ng mga privacy concern. Kasi, napakadali nang kumuha ng mga sources, combine them to do new form of analysis. Kung baga, kuha tayo ng data dito, data, data, data. Pag samahin natin, meron na tayong sariling data. Which is, uh, may concern tayo in terms of privacy. So, these firms combine publicly accessible data with information obtained from the government and other sources to create vast warehouses of data about people and companies that they can that they can then sell. So, one of the uh, example na meron tayo in terms of privacy concern, uh, for example, in terms of credit card, one time, actually na experience ko to, may tumawag sa akin uh, during the day na nakuha ko yung credit card ko kay BPI. May tumawag sa akin na number na tinatanong, ah, Sir, uh, kailan po, uh, Sir, di ba na-receive nyo na po yung inyong credit card? Alam niya, alam niya na na-receive yung credit card ko. And then, Sir, tatanong ko lang po, ano po yung card number nyo? And ano po yung batch? Ano pong batch kayo nabigyan ng credit card? So, nagtaka ako kasi, Paano niya nala, uh, paano nalaman uh, siya? Cellphone number lang siya pero nalaman niya yung number ko, personal number ko. Tapos tinatanong niya yung card number. Tapos yung nasa likod which is the PIN. Alam ko na PIN 'yon dun sa credit card pero ang sabi niya batch number na ang aim niya is makaloko ng tao. So ano yung concern? Paano niya nalaman yung number ko? Paano niya nalaman na kumuha ko na ng credit card? So yun yung nagiging problem kasi madalas nakukuha yung information natin. Hindi natin sigurado na yung information na binigay natin sa isang organization, sa isang office, ay hindi natin uh, ay hindi natin na-sure kung doon lang ba talaga siya ginagamit. That's why nagkaroon tayo ng Data Privacy Act of the Philippines na kung saan as employer, hindi tayo pwedeng uh, basta-basta kumuha ng cellphone number ng ating empleyado. Bawal mong ibigay yung number ng ibang tao. For example, ay pwede, nagtanong sa'yo, pwede po bang hingin yung number na ganito? So, wag na wag kayo magbibigay. No? Kasi that is one of the Data Privacy Act na meron, uh, under siya ng Data Privacy Act of the Philippines. Bawal tayo magbigay ng number ng ibang tao. Bawal tayo mag-take ng pictures ng ibang tao na hindi nila alam. Bawal tayong mag-post ng picture ng ibang tao na wala, walang consent nila. For example, you take a selfie. Pag selfie mo, meron tao sa likod, medyo hindi maganda yung itsura niya kasi, wajari, nakain siya, gano'n, nakanganga. Pwede siyang magreklamo sa inyo na you are uh, parang... Hindi hindi ka naman niya hinayaang i-post yung hindi ka naman niya pinayagan i-post yung picture niya pero pinost mo pa din. Nag-viral, daming ano, ang daming comments, mga bad comments, nakakatawa. Pwede kang kasuhan. Kasi hindi ka naman uh, pinayagan nung may-ari nung mukha na i-post mo yung picture niya. So that is a data privacy. Yun yung nagiging privacy na uh, concern natin ngayon in terms of our data mining. So kailangan mas maging maingat tayo pagdating sa data na meron tayo. For example, isa pa, uh, sa isang mga parlor shop, barbers, madalas kinukuha yung cellphone number. Ang share ko lang sa inyo, ako, hindi ako naglalagay ng cellphone number. Kung ni-require man nila, maling number ilalagay ko doon, mamaling yung tatlong last part ng number. Kasi nga, hindi natin alam kung sa, kanino, kung saan gagamitin yung number na yon So, Madalas, may makita kayo sa mga internet na pag nag-insert kayo ng pangalan, for example, doon sa Zoom. Uh, di ba pag nag-login kayo sa Zoom, maglalagay kayo ng date. Doon sa ilalim ng date noon, may nakalagay na yung 
data na to, information na to ay hindi store for verification lang siya. Or yung lahat ng mga information na kailangan natin na sabi doon, under the Data Privacy Act of the Philippines, yung data na to ay hindi pwedeng gamitin sa iba, kundi dito lang sa program na to. Parang ganun. So we have to be very uh, observant pagdating sa mga information na meron tayo. Kasi pwede siyang magamit sa iba. Nang masama. Okay. In terms of network and communication, the ability for computers to communicate with one another and maybe more importantly to facilitate communication between individuals and groups has been an important factor in the growth of computer computing over the past several decades. So first, we have the wireless networking na kung saan hindi tayo gumagamit ng mga cables para i-connect yung isang digital devices to other digital devices. For example, uh, our smartphones can access internet using wireless networking. Starbucks provide wireless hotspots for our laptop or iPod. So the wireless technology have made internet access more convenient and more functional yung ating mga tablets and laptops. So let's examine pa yung ibang ano, other wireless technologies. First, we have the Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi stands for wireless fidelity. It is a technology that takes an internet signal, converts it into radio waves. Approximately, kaya doon ng radio waves na to na makonect sa isang device by 65 feet. So one of the primary places where Wi-Fi is being used in the, the home, home users are purchasing Wi-Fi routers. So gaya na ginagamit natin ngayon, so we use Wi-Fi routers in order to connect to uh, the internet. So yan ang isa sa example ng uh, wireless uh, networking. Wireless network. When we say organizational networking, we have the LAN and the WAN. LAN stands for Local Area Network. And WAN or WAN is the Wide Area Network. So a LAN by definition, a local network is already operating in the same building or on the same campus. Uh, for example, sa mga business, we use LAN Local Area uh, area network, yung kung saan all the information is ma-access lang yung lahat na nandun sa loob ng office sa lahat na nasa building na yun. While one naman is wide area, ibig sabihin, within the cities, within our states, magagamit, wider area, magagamit natin yung network na yun. Okay. So, Client server, this personal computer originally was used as a standalone computing device. A program was installed on the computer and used to do word processing number crunching. When we say intranet, kung makakita natin dito, intranet is part of a business network. Wait lang, inom na ako. Okay, rinig pa ako? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, sige. Direction na natin. So, intranet is part of a business network. Kung makikita nyo dito sa graph, uh, ay, sorry. Dun sa, ah, sa graph, sa figure, we have the intranet, the extranet, and the internet. When we say intranet, uh, they also, uh, web, the internal set of web pages is called the internet. So web pages on the internet are not accessible to those outside the company. For example, in a company, yung intranet o yung LAN, yan ang makaka-access lang noon ay yung mga employees. The data na meron, the information na meron doon ay within the organization. While for the extranet, so Makikita siya ni supplier, customer, at partners. Mostly, ng mga data lang naman na hinahanap nila ay yung inventory levels, ilan na lang yung stock, ng materials, sa customers, inventory levels, so yun. Yun yung mga makikita nila sa extranet. While the internet, yun nga yung sinasabi ko, public na yung buong makakita. So lahat ng information na meron tayo sa internet, Kaya siyang i-access ng kung sino mang tao. 
telecommunication in business. So, when we say telecommunication, it is the transmittal, transmittal of data and, eva and information from one point to another. So, we use telephone, email, and the web, rely on fast, reliable uh, communication. So, yun yung ginagamit natin for the uh, communication within the organization. Uh, improvements made possible by telecommunication, meron tayong email, voicemail, instant messaging, faxing, file transfer, mobile telephony, and teleconferencing. So, kaya nang ginagawa natin yun is the teleconferencing. While full tran file transfer, so, some of our email kasi, pwede natin ginagamit siya for file transfer, but very limited lang ng email pagdating sa size ng ating mga files na sinesend. So, we have also separate software na ginagamit. For example, if we are going to send a 100 MB file sa customers, sa other department, we didn't use our email kasi hindi siya magsesend. Kagaya na sa Gmail natin, Maximum of 25 MB lang yon para lang tayo makapag-send. So kung 100 MB, meron kaming ibang ginagamit na uh, file transfer na application. Greater efficiency kasi you can immediately transfer or deliver your information, the data. And better distribution of data. Central storage with both local and remote access. Okay. Improvements made possible by the telecommunication, instant transaction using web and wireless technologies, flexible and mobile workforce, and alternative channels, spreading voice, radio, television, so ginagamit na yan. So, ano yung mga madalas natin ginagamit for telecommunication? We have the cellular phones or the cell phones, video conferencing, wireless payments, we have the Gcash, Pay Maya, so yan. Part yun ang isang telecommunication. Ang telecommunication. Peer-to-peer, -peer, file sharing, and web-empowered commerce. Okay. Another part of uh, information system is the bandwidth and the media. So when we say bandwidth, speed at which data is communicated. Also called transmission rate or bit rate. Kung gano'n natin kabilis, Paano kabilis magkukommunicate yung data? When we say BPS, it is a unit of measure for bandwidth. So, baseband communications medium that can carry only one transmission at a time, while broadband is uh, multiple transmission, uh, can, can carry multiple transmissions simultaneously. So, transmission speed measurement, so meron tayong BPS, bit per second, KBPS, Mbps, Gbps, at Tbps. For example, for the internet, so isa nyo sa bandwidth na kung saan, uh, yung data is nagko-communicate or nagta-transfer from one uh, area or one devices to another devices. So, yan yung tinatawag natin na bandwidth. For example, our internet connection, you have a 10 Mbps 10 Mbps speed na internet. So, yun yung tinatawag natin na speed. Ano ba? While the media is the tangible media, uh, several types of communication media, we have the tangible, we have the twisted pair cable, ito, ano na lang natin, daanan na lang natin. We have the twisted pair cable, coaxial cable, mostly ito ginagamit to for uh, televisions, and the optical fiber, uh, ginagamit to for the uh, internet, uh, so, yun. Okay. Let's now proceed to the information system security. Paano ba natin pangangalagaan o paano, tayo ma, paano natin ma-assure na si secure na yung information system natin ay safe? We have the triad. The security triad of information system. We have confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Pag-aralan nyo ito, kasama ito sa exam next week. When we say confidentiality, ibig sabihin lang nito, there are uh, not everyone in the organization can access the information. When we say confidential, uh, for example, 
the information is for the top management only. Hindi makakakita ng information if the production supervisor pa baba. All managerial positions, sila lang yung makakita. So that's confidential information. Uh, for example, in terms of grade record, yung grade nyo sa akin is very confidential. So hindi pwede makita siya ng ibang tao at ako lang lang makakita. When you say integrity, it is the assurance that information being accessed has not been altered. So kailangan daw, yung information security natin, hindi siya kayong baguhin ng uh, madali. So there are person lang na allowed na mag-change ng information. There are persons lang, authorized person na pwede lang mag-delete, mag-add ng data. So we have to provide the integrity on our information system. And lastly, is the availability. Which means, can be accessed but by anyone authorized. So, to do so in an appropriate time frame, depending on the type of information. For example, a stock trader, so malalaman niya ilan yung sales number of the day. So, Amazon that, uh, such as companies such as Amazon.com will require their servers to be available 24 hours a day, even 7 days a week. Other companies may not suffer if their web servers are down. For example, the Amazon niya. Yung customers, pwede na lang i-access. Lahat ng binibenta nila, available yung information na pwede nilang maku. So that is the three security triad. Sabi ko, pag-aralan nyo yan, saan yung text on next week. So how we will protect our information system? Wait, inom lang ako. Okay. Okay. How we are going to protect our information system? Do you have any idea? Ano ba yung mga types na ginagamit natin for information security? Okay. First, authentication. So the most common way to identify someone is through their physical appearance. But how do we identify someone sitting behind a computer screen or at the ATM. Tools for authentication are used to ensure that person accessing the information is indeed who they present themselves to be. Authentication can be accomplished by identifying someone through one or more three factors. Something they know, something they have, or something they are. So one of the tools na ginagamit natin is authentication para ma-access natin yung information. For example, social media, a Facebook account, in order for us to open our Facebook account, we have to provide the email and the password. So yung email and password that serves as uh, the tool in order for us to access our information. Ibig sabihin, authenticated yung data, authenticated yung uh, software na hindi siya makikita ng ibang tao. Di ba na lang kung alam ng ibang tao yung password saka ATM, uh, password saka email nyo. For example, in ATM, Authenticated yung ating mga ATM cards with the use of our personal pins, personal password. Access control is the second part. Once a user has been authenticated, the next step is to ensure that they are, can only access the information resources that are appropriate. So this is done through the use of access control. Access control determine which users are authorized to read, modify, add, or delete information. So sa access control, ito, ini-implement sa amin, meron tayong meron tayong mga information na read only lang yung pwede mong gawin, hindi mo siya pwedeng i-modify, hindi mo siya pwedeng burahin. Ang kaya mo lang gawin dun sa information na yon ay buksan, basahin, and hindi mo siya pwedeng i-save as. We can use also yung access control sa Excel. Uh, sige, turo ko na lang din sa inyo. So, pag meron kayong mga information sa inyong mga uh, PC, nag-mix na yung ating klase, sorry. Sige, okay lang. Pag meron tayong mga uh, information na ayaw natin makita na nasa Excel, we can use our uh, the access control. Sige, try natin. For example, 
Okay. For example, you are going, ito yung ginamit natin kanina. For example, you are going to provide access control doon sa data mo, sa information mo na nasa Excel. So, paano mo siya gagawin? You just have to, during saving ng file, ng Excel natin, meron kayo yung makikita ditong tools. <coughs> Excuse. Tools. So, dito sa tools, we have the general options. Ayaw lumabas. Ayun pala, lumabas na. So, we have the general option. For example, uh, maglalagay ka ng password para ma-open yung Excel or to modify. Ibig sabihin, bago mo ma-edit, bago mo ma-open, kailangan mo ilagay yung password. For example, lagay tayo ng password. Or, read-only recommended. Ibig sabihin, pag in-open mo yung file, pag in-open ng ibang tao yung file mo, read only lang yung magagawa niyo sa file. Hindi niya pwedeng i-modify, i-delete, or what. So, that one is uh, an example of access control. Okay. So, for the, for each information, resource that an organization wishes to manage a list of users who have the ability to take specific action can be created. So, meron tayong access control list, which is sa amin, on our organization, uh, lahat kami is meron kami username and password sa aming computers na kung saan si access control list. Yes, Bernard? Sir, hindi naka-share screen yung PowerPoint nyo. Hindi naka-share screen? Okay na? Okay na po. Okay na po. Okay, Thank sorry. you, sir. Okay. So, yung access control list, yung sabihin, yung mga user lang na nandun sa access control list, sila lang yung makakapag-open ng mga file. So, yun. Next, security tool is the uh, encryption. When we say encryption, it is a process of encoding data upon its transmission or storage. So, only authorized individuals can read it. This encoding is accomplished by a computer program which encodes the plain text that needs to be transmitted. Then, the recipient receives the uh, cipher text and decodes it, what, uh, what we call the description. So, ito yung nagiging uh, uh, type. Ng, ganito yung nagiging process ng encryption. An alternative to symmetric key encryption is public key encryption. So, for example, the sender, uh, meron siyang text na isesend dun sa recipient and then i-encrypt niya using plain text plus public key. So, with the public key, during communication channel, during communication, ito yung makikita natin na nandoon sa plain text which is it became super text na kung saan hindi natin maintindihan kung ano ang ibig sabihin kapag hindi natin siya dinecrypt using a private key. So, the recipient, it decode niya yung information na to using private key and then saan niya malalaman ano yung meron dun sa text na yun. So, that is called the public key encryption. Uh, public key encryption. So, na assure natin na kung sino lang talaga yung recipient, sino lang yung pinagbigyan mo ng private key, sila lang yung makakaintindi ng iyong data o information na sinundo. And another information security tools is the backup. Siyempre, uh, napaka-essential tool ng information security yung backup. Kasi kapag nawala lahat ng information natin, wala tayong pagkukunan. Kaya mahalaga, in every organization, meron tayong mga backup na application. The firewalls is also a part of the information security for both hardware and software. For hardware, uh, for the software, meron tayong uh, parts and operating system na kung saan 
Diyos. Uh, software system na kung saan hindi pwedeng i-access ng other computer na meron ka doon sa iyong computer set up or your desktop. While the for the hardware naman, we have the physical uh, that includes the physical security na kung saan yung main uh, system natin or main ano ba? Paano ba yun? Uh, main uh, data information natin, system natin is naka Authorized person lang yung makakapasok doon. So, physical protection, gumagamit tayo ng ID. Kung ma- nakapapanood yun sa mga pelikula, bago makapasok sa pinto, you have to tap your ID or scan using eye scan or face scan. So, yun yung mga physical security in order to protect our uh, information system na hindi siya physically matampered or mawala. Kaya, most of the organization especially yung mga malaking organization, they did not allow the employees to bring their own flash drive. Kami, bawal kami magdala ng flash drive, bawal kami magdala ng charger, kasi pwede siyang magamit para makakuha ng mga information. So, yung mga ganong instances, so nabibigyan sila ng mga disciplinary action kasi ganun na lang yung pagpahalaga namin sa information system. Nagsaksa ka ng may virus, Possible, ma-terminate ka. Nag-download ka ng application na hindi otorizado ng uh, ISD, ng Information System Department, IT Department, possible matanggal kayo. So, ganun kahalaga yung information system. So, ano ba yung mga type ng physical security? We have the locked doors, physical intrusion detection, security equipment, environmental monitoring, and especially employee training. So, kailangan Uh, sa amin, we have the information system training na kung saan uh, every new employee kailangan ma-discuss ano ba yung rules and regulation pagdating kay information security. That's all. Sensya, binilis lang ko na kasi lumalakas na yung ulan. So that will be our uh, discussion for today. So we already discussed the hardware different type of software the physical sec- close. the physical security tools the triad for information security uh, so yun so for our for our next topic For the industrial information system, we will identify naman the information system in the enterprise. So, mas magiging open tayo, ano ba yung mga ginagamit na information system sa isang organization and uh, how it will affect doon sa organi- uh, process natin sa ating organization. Okay? So, any question, guys? Wala po, sir. Napaka-active talaga ni Bernard. Ito <laughs> 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 ko yan. Okay. Any question? Masakit pala sa lalamuna kapag naulan. Sigaw na eh. So, <laughs> medyo binilis ako na lang, guys. Ha, kasi baka lumakas pa yung lalang. Hindi tayo matapos. Any question with our uh, information topic for today? Wala. So, so isasend ka naman po yan sa GC. Ano po? Uh, isasend ka sa GC yung uh, PowerPoint yung ginamit, kani, uh, yung ginamit natin ngayon. And then, by next week, sabi ko nga, we will have our first quiz. For the first quiz natin, I will use Google Form. Google Form, tapos hindi siya essay. It will be objective type. Bubuksan ko lang. Multiple choice. Yung multiple choice, ginagawa ko siya sa ethics. Engineering ethics gagawin ko. Pero multiple choice sa information system, Uh, possible, hindi. 
Sorry. <laughs> true or false? True or false? Information sa ethics, makikita niyo yung true or false doon. mag enjoy kayo sa ethics, sa true or false, at saka sa uh, multiple choice to. Pero but for information system, it will be objective. You have to define, identify, ano yung tawag doon. And then, we have also the enumeration. Okay? So our exam will be next week. Okay sa inyo ng 1.30? Okay lang po, sir. Okay, 1.30, isesend ko sa inyo yung link ng Google Form. Please, ano ba, refrain from, oh, depende na sa inyo, hindi ko na kayo anin. Depende na lang kung how will you answer the quiz. But, yung quiz natin is meron siyang time frame. Once na mag, ma-open yung link, bawal nyo na siya i-close. Kasi pag kinlose nyo, hindi nyo na matatapos. Kung baga, first at one attempt lang yung quiz na yon and then good for 45 minutes ibig sabihin pag natapos yung 45 minutes na hindi niyo na submit yung exam it will be considered as wala kayong na-submit ganun yung mangyayari kaya you have to be very careful doon sa pagsagot but syempre if magka-problem kayo pagdating doon sa sa link i will give you the uh Uh, Pag-usapan natin. Basta, i-inform nyo lang ako once na magkaroon kayo ng problem dun sa link na isesend ko. So, your exam will be total of 45 points. Points na hindi items. Kasi meron kasi ditong 2 points each. So, this will be a uh, total of 45. Uh, total points. Two section we have the identification of terms and the enumeration. So for the identification, I want you to study the first part of our Unidiscus natin, the information system. Uh, yung ano ba yung part? Ano ba yung components yon? Ano ba yung mga components na information system kasama yon? Tapos, the security triad, the information security triad, and the information security tools. Halos lahat doon manggagaling. The uh, cycle for system development, the stage uh, na processing, yung software. So yun, mostly, doon lang papatak yung ating ano. Exam. So, by next week, I will send it to you and then aral na lang natin. Okay? Kasi, for the midterm kasi, midterm grade, ang pagbabasehan lang natin, yung quiz na to, yung unang essay na binigay, uh, isang unang assignment na binigay ko, tapos, magbibigay pa ako ng isang assignment bago mag midterm and our midterm exam. Yun lang yung pagkukuhanan ko ng aking, na inyong midterm grade. Well, don't worry, ipapakita ko sa inyo yung midterm grade nyo once na ma-finalize siya para at least alam nyo kung ano yung hahabulin nyo doon sa second part ng ating semester. Okay? Question? Any question? Wala na? Wala na po. Wala na. Okay. So, kung wala na, dating gawe I need you to open your camera for my weekly report. Gising pa ba kayo? Masarap matulog na ulan. Okay. So, sabi sa ambulong daw ang daan ng bagyo eh. Oo, oh, ganun. Opo. Sa Tuesday daw po ata. Tuesday, buti na lang Saturday tayo. Okay? Okay pa kayo? Gising pa kayo? Okay. So, let's take picture muna. Ready? One, two, three. Okay. Isa pa, isa pa, isa pa. Isa pa. Para sa second page. 
Okay. One, two, three. Okay. So, that would be all for today. Later, babalitaan ko kayo kung magkaklase tayo for engineering ethics. <laughs> Pero basically, gusto kong mag-discuss para at least ay masulit natin yung ngayong araw. Okay? So, that would be all for today. Later, see you again. Maybe. So, <laughs> yung sa mga naka, yung sa mga ano, during the attendance pala, yung hindi ko natawag kanina during attendance checking, pa-message na lang sa akin para ma-update ko. Okay? So, yun lang. And then, dun sa mga hindi pa nagpapasa ng assignment, please, paano, pas, pasabi na lang dun sa mga classmate nyo. Dun sa hindi pa nagpapasa. Si, Ch si Wendy, nakita ko nag-send na eh. Ayun na lang pala si Wendy. Tsaka si Carlin. Kakunti na lang naman. Okay? So for the information system for the quiz 1. For the quiz 1, highest score is uh, 26 over 30. So that is 93%. Uh, ayos na din. For others, bawi kayo next time. Okay? Question. Wala na? Ipula na? Yes po. Sir. Yes po. Hindi na malalaman yung grade ngayon sa assignment. Ah, gusto nyo malaman? <laughs> sige po, sige po. Gusto nyo bang malaman yung grade nyo ng assignment? <laughs> ah, don't worry, makikita nyo sa midterm lahat yung grade nyo. Ngayon, uh, bawi na lang kayo. Ano? So sabi ko nga, yung assignment nyo is chinecheck ko yung ano ha. Chinecheck ko kung copy-paste yun. Uh, medyo naging mabait ako ngayon dun sa... 30 points po yung assignment. 30. Pick the 10 per number. Uh, mostly ng mga... Average no average scores average ay 82%. Ganun, 87. Yan, ganun. Hindi man ako mababang magbigay ng grade. Okay. Question. Wala na? Okay. So, see you again later. Bye, -bye guys. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you po. Thank you po. Thank you po, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you po. Sino yun? Jorge. Stop recording ko na. Baka ano masabi nyo.